because with Tolkien, there is lots and lots of literature that you can go to and read about anything. We all know The Hobbit and we all know The Lord of the Rings. The letters of Tolkien are interesting because there are many letters that Tolkien wrote where he was answering questions sent to him by fans. For instance, what happened to Frodo and Bilbo when they went to the West? And we'll examine that later on. <coughs> so if you ever get a hands on that book, look up Balrogs or something in the appendix at the back and then find it in there. And he'll have a letter there where he explains something. And one of the interesting ones he explained was, did hobbits have pointed ears? Not once in The Lord of the Rings nor The Hobbit does he mention their ears. But in one of his letters he said, for the sake of illustration, it's probably good to give them slightly pointed ears. And that was in one of his letters. Now, oh, the other one is big feet. Tolkien never mentioned hobbits having big feet. He did say that Mr. Proudfoot had big feet, but I know humans who have big feet. I met a guy once where I could put my shoe inside his shoe. He was a basketball player and his feet were so big I could actually put my whole shoe inside his shoe. It's pretty crazy. So, and, and I think he says, one of, I think it's the stores, there are three types of hobbits, they have big feet as well. But the idea of, of Frodo and, and Bilbo and Mary Pippin and Sam having big feet, that's made up by the movie. Mainly because the Hildebrand brothers used to illustrate Tolkien pictures back in the 70s and they always had hobbits with big feet in their illustrations. But what for a better word, their, their illustrations were very sort of comic-like. Right, the Silmarillion has lots of information about Tolkien where you can read about different characters and creatures. The Unfinished Tales is a very good book to go to. We've, we'll mention Adventures of Tom Bombadil later on, but there's a lot of Hobbit folklore in written in poem, in written as poems in that book. In recent years, we've had these books published. That was in 2007, The Children of Hurin. These are longer stories out of the Silmarillion. Beren and Luthien a couple of years ago, and last year, The Fall of Gondolin. At the inter and in the Fall of Gondolin, you, know, you have lots of creatures like Balrogs and dragons come into the story. Now, these are two early books from what's called the History of Middle-earth, which is 12 volumes. And there's lots of information in these two books. There's also poems and stories where there's a little, some more information about Middle-earth. And there is a book out now called Tolkien, the Maker of Middle-earth. There's a big exhibition that happened at Oxford, and now the exhibition is in New York, and it's all about Tolkien's pictures and early letters and early writings and early drafts. Mm. One of the things you have to realise about Tolkien is, especially in these books here, and the Silmarillion and the Unfinished Tales, he wrote many, many different versions of a lot of his stories. Because what happened was he started, for instance, Baron Luthien started writing back in 1917. By the time we got to the, the final published story in the Silmarillion in the 1970s, the story had changed dramatically. Sauron originally was a cat. <laughs> right? So, you know, the, the story, and Beren, what, Beren was an elf, later on he's a man. So, over the years, Tolkien's ideas about some of the characters have changed. Uh, his original conception of Tom Bombadil is totally different to what he ends up being in The Lord of the Rings. The original Tom Bombadil would have been, would have been better suited to be in Wind of the Willows that in The Lord of the Rings. Right, Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil is described as 
not very tall. He wears yellow boots, a blue jacket or shirt, and he has a hat with a swan feather in it. Now, Tom Bombadil is probably Tolkien's biggest mystery in Middle Earth. He probably tops the list. Because we have no idea what he is, where he comes from, what race he belongs to. Hello, we're talking about Tom Bombadil here at Time.